se non entra la prima sono dolori. La presenza agonistica di Sara Errari. Il tele italiano storico questo incontro. Match point Nadal. Inizia il match per... Well, 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 this is your MTO Tennis Podcast and, well, it's raining and they're kicking us out, so we're going to keep it very quick. I'm Giulio Gasparin and I'm here with Ross. Hi, Ross. Hi there, everybody. How are you enjoying the rain? Oh, I love it. It's just fantastic. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, like, it's the UK. So. Oh, I'm, I'm just about to, like, rip off my T-shirt and run around in the, in the rain. I just love it so much. Well, rain at the end of the day, rain at the beginning wasn't really rain, was misty, but the play got starting late and well a day of surprises as well yeah I mean um, you know there's been it's it's a tricky one like you know after seeing Wozniacki do some good stuff here I, it was kind of surprising to see her sort of go out so not tamely but you know um, without I much hope, fighting yeah I yeah I hope, I hope that, that she was going to sort of pick up and go on a run but she seems to be fairly happy with what she's put together well, with, with time with Zawa Wimbledon I think she's going to be dangerous i think so, and she's unseeded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's been a big thing. Obviously, the Wimbledon seedings have come out today. There's a lot of good players out there, and there's a lot of players that are making quite a noise here that I think are going to be a nightmare when, they when their names come up in the draw. For that, I will suggest everyone to go on Brits Watch because Ross is writing a really good piece on that, so just keep that one on your eyes. Well, um, you named Voz? She lost to Monica Pereg and we talked to Monica and Monica thinks like okay it was a 4 6 6 3 6 4 but it was much tighter than it actually seems by the score. All the way through, were you? Um, you know, I thought I was in trouble quite a few times just when the match started getting very even. Um, she she's a great player and she makes you work for every single point, so it was really up to me to stay very focused in my game plan and what I wanted to accomplish out there on the court, but Um, all in all, it was a really tight match. Like the score, I think, doesn't really reflect just how tight it was. Um, but I'm just really happy. I and well, funny enough, she had two consecutive match points. On the first one, she made a very bad very bad double fall and then backs it up with an ace. Well, that's not something you see every day. I was praying for an ace to be honest. <laughs> um, you know, you just get to match point. Even though you're 40-15 up, there's still always the nerves because, you know, the other player might play much looser and she can, you know, all of a sudden hit one or two winners, um, you know, because it's happened to me in the past. So I was just thinking, you know, I, I just need to get the first serve in the court. So a double fault wasn't the way I wanted to start the first one. I was just praying for that ace in the second one. I was kind of lucky. It just went right on the team. So like many players, she seems to like be maturing into what she needs to, to do. And, you know, she seems to really have settled down, settled into herself. Um, well, you know, I think I've just started to understand, you know, how I function a little bit, you know. When, when you're starting uh, as a professional, you know, you, you need to work your way through it and understand your body and how it works, especially at this level. And I don't think I really came to glimpse with that in the, in the previous years, and I think, you know, maturity is a big part of it as well. Um, but again, I'm not in any rush to force myself to mature right away. I'm enjoying the ride, and I think that's what's helping me right now is just having fun doing what I do best and, and um, just enjoying every single moment out on the court and I'm really, I'm really, uh, really happy. So. <laughs> And yeah, as you said, like maturing a couple of years ago, she had a good run at Wimbledon, then last year was a disaster. So we asked her how she falls on grass, actually. Well, I'm pretty aggressive, so I think it's, it's, um, it's favoring my game a little bit. Um, you know, I've had up and down results with grass courts uh, in, the, in the past. You know, I had a fourth round in Wimbledon and uh, last year uh, early exits in all the tournaments. So it's, uh, it's a surface where you have to really. Um, work at in the first week and a half, you know, try to use Nottingham as a, as a good preparation for, for Wimbledon and getting used to the body and how I'm supposed to get really low and just feel everything out. And I got to the semis there, so it wasn't really that much practice for me. It was more like an actual uh, competition, but I did prepare very well the week before and uh, just really happy with how my team has helped me. Yeah, she also talked about, you know, how she felt to, to, to get into Wimbledon and, you know, just the feelings about the prestige of the event. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really good um, going into Wimbledon. Obviously, I want to get as far as I possibly can here first and then uh, focus on that. But, 
you know, it's the last, Wimbledon is the last tournament before kind of like a half season break. Um, so obviously I want to finish off with a high, but I'm really, really happy with how I've gotten used to the grass court so far and with pretty consistent results on them as well. So I'm just, you know, taking it match by match and day to day and, and seeing what I can improve, especially going into a Grand Slam. You always want to be in top form there. I know that um, there's some things that I can improve even off of today's win. So I'm always looking for those tiny little things uh, that will make all the difference in the end. And last, well, she's always been very proud of her Puerto Rican uh, passport and Puerto Rican heritage. So the news that she made it to the main draw of the Olympics was very exciting for her. Yeah, it was a huge pressure actually for me at the French Open. Like my coach was like, "Don't worry, you're going to qualify. Just don't think of that." But obviously, there were so many people fighting for that last few um, positions there at the French. So um, I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I was I was lucky enough to get to the third round and uh, and secure my place. But you know, that was just a main focus for me at the beginning of the year. You know, I didn't really have a shot at qualifying for the team, being almost outside the top 100, and all of a sudden, you know, being able to qualify and my ranking still going up is, is something really special. But for me, uh, representing my country at the Olympic Games is something that I've always wanted to do, and uh, I know that I'm going to enjoy that moment um, as much as everybody else is, you know, but it's going to be uh, very memorable being my first Olympic Games. Yeah, Don Tavorziaki, she, um, she, she actually put a very positive face on what might have looked like actually a pretty resounding defeat. You don't climb Mount Everest in one day. Um, so, no, I played really well. I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah, the foot, the body's really good. So um, baseline rallies were uh, really good and, and we really hit the ball hard and consistent and, and in good spots so um, yeah. One of the positives I think she can take is definitely a serve which worked very well for half of the match at the end was a bit like not shaky but didn't keep up the percentage but she's also very positive about you know, the, the high performance of the serve. I served um, quite well uh, for a while there and then um, just for a couple of games in the end of the second set um, yeah, I think I didn't get the first serve in, or she just went for the returns and it went in. But, you know, it's the small margins today, really. Um, and to be honest, um, I think it's... I played really well yesterday, and I think I played even better today. So it's a lot of positives to take with you. And at the end of the day, on, on grass, um, you know, sometimes it can be that little thing that, that can just make a difference. And, uh, yeah, I think I can, I can just look up from here and, and just bring that confidence with me to, to Wimbledon and, and just hope for a good draw. It's been interesting to see how uh, David Cortese has been working with um, with her father and the, the dynamic there uh, and hopefully we'll actually sort of see a shift so that she actually gets some coaching and a, and a new voice in her, in her head. What has he, what, what he added? Yeah, we started working and then um, I hurt myself <laughs> before I even got to have a day off so it wasn't many days and uh, so um, that happened, but then I just, uh, once I could stand on my foot again, we, we kind of, um, he came back and, and we worked every day and, and just worked on some technical aspects of the thing. And at the end of the day, um, I think, you know, he's a, he's a good coach, he knows what he's doing and he knows the girls as well. And um, I think it's, uh, it's nice for my dad as well to kind of, um, you know, take a bit of a, a step back. Um, he's wanted to do that for years, and you know he says he's not getting any younger. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's a nice combination for me. Is it, is it, I think it's good. Um, my dad has still uh, been there at the practices and stuff, and you know he still um, you know comes with inputs. If there's anything he sees, he talks to David as well. But um, yeah, it's it's good. Um, I'm obviously I've done so well with my dad and and everything, but um, yeah, it's it's nice. I just. I just want to keep improving, keep playing better, and right now I feel like this was the best uh, choice for me. And yeah, on to Wimbledon, she will be there as an unseeded player. And 
I know lots of people think she's not a good player on grass and you know she can't defend as much but her record at Wimbledon is pretty good I mean like four or six consecutive fourth rounds or something like that no not as many but she's been to a fourth round so many times that that shows that she actually can play on grass I don't think anyone wants to find her in the first round no I don't think so I think she's going to be a real dangerous floater I think um, it would be hilarious though if she ends up being drawn against Azarenka again in the first round I think good um Again, I, I think Monica played really well today, and um, you, I just have to take that and then just bring it with me to next week. There's a couple of things that you can always improve on, but generally I'm feeling good, I'm feeling confident, confident and I'm just, again, I'm not seated, so um, that's hopefully uh, I can get uh, a nice draw for myself. Um, I feel like the draws haven't been with me <laughs> the last year, so I'm like, hopefully, eventually it's going to turn, right? So um, I'm hoping it's going to start at Wimbledon. What are you going to do if you get Azarenka again? <laughs> you know, uh, at this point, I'm just used to it, and I'll just have to win. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think I played Azarenka like five or six times when I was like five in the world. I'm like, this is not normal in the first round of a tournament. So. I, I think there's actually a law now that says that you two have to be drawn. In the, in the <laughs> so. But seriously, from this point, where do you literally go from here? Do you, is there much to be gained to go down to Wimbledon and start practicing there as opposed to staying here? Yeah, I mean, we kind of have to because it's a mandatory Wimbledon party tomorrow, so oh. you have to be there. Um, that sounds hard. <laughs> that sounds really tough. <laughs> but all the players who are not playing tomorrow here have to go down there. So I maybe would have stayed another day or two here and then gone down. But um, but yeah, I'm just going to go there tomorrow and, and then practice and just get in the, the whole atmosphere and everything. And I mean, Wimbledon is such a beautiful place and, and a place you always love going back. So it has great memories for me. and. Um, I'm excited to go. And also, we all know that her mind might have been a bit caught in the fact that she's still waiting for a reply from the Olympic Committee whether she will be playing the Olympics or not. But, uh, you know, the other day it's not in my hands anymore, so I don't worry about it. Um, I don't worry about things I can't control. Um, so I just, whatever decision they make, I'm going to accept it and then just move forward from there. If, Obviously, I want to play the Olympics, I want to be the flag bearer, and I want to get that experience, and I want to win a medal. But if not, if they decide not, then I'll have a week off and, and just prepare and, and, you know, just uh, probably go somewhere nice to train for a week. So <laughs> I think at the end of the day, uh, whatever it's going to be, it's, it's going to be. Radvanska was uh, in great form. I really think that she's rounding into some solid form now, and and about time too. I think um, I think she needs a, a good run here to give her the me momentum in Wimbledon. Much better match than yesterday. Um, well, I think it's a good match from the beginning to the end, and um, a couple of uh, breaks on the way. But I think um, still was uh, like that serve was also the key in that match, and we're happy that I could. Um, a little come back in that uh, second set in the end. I mean, well, I think I was certainly pretty good. I think um, um, I think um, that is always very helping, especially in, the, in that kind of match. So, um, in the important moments, I was serving good, and I closed it up as well with a good serve. So, that's always always very helping. As well, I think um, every match like this um, gives me a lot of confidence and. Um, it's easier afterwards um, um, in, in the end of the tournament or going to the Grand Slam. So I'm um, just very happy with them win with the game. And um, well, now it's the stage that you have to play better and better to win matches. So it was tomorrow. And then, well, we had a bit of a joke with her talking about other sports that she could have been taking if she wasn't a tennis player. Well, um, Good question, but if I look exactly like I am now, I don't have much choices from the volleyball or <laughs> basketball. So um, I'm not sure. Um, maybe gymnastic, but I think um, I like the sport when you can play a bit longer than um, you know when you're not 20 and you're old. So um, maybe I have to. Do something else, but uh, you tell me. Would you, would, you, would you play golf? I mean, golf. Sure, I think they make you so much money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, 
Uh, former champion Vesnina is another player that's rounding into some very dangerous form. She's looking very good and she's had a very good consistent year. I think she's going to be a real danger to, to look at. It feels great. Uh, I always like to play here in Eastbourne since I came here first time. I was like, well, there's really good grass here and uh, a little bit tough conditions with the wind, but I was just start starting feeling well here from from first time when I came here. So, of course, I have great memories from 2013 when I won a title and it was a big thing for me, especially this tournament. Uh, you can see how many legends were winning this tournament. You know, we have uh, some pictures in the player lounge and you can see that it's like Martina Navratilova, I mean, the greatest, Dave Port, like, you know, like really big players were coming here and winning titles. So, of course, it brings you some confidence. And she's an expert in the tough conditions because the year she won, that was absolutely horrible. The year that she won, I think they played in a cloud. I mean, there, there was a big, big light mist that settled on the court. It was horrific. <laughs> I mean, you have to be ready for these conditions because playing for so many years on the tour, we always have sun, rain, almost snow sometimes in Europe, you know, beginning of the <laughs> spring. Uh, then it can you can play it when it's really dark so we have to prepare ourselves of course it's not easy and uh, mentally you have to be ready for that and as the woman you know we're always complaining about everything you know so it's it's normal <laughs> yeah. it's normal for us but yeah you just have to go there and just do what you can do you know and just fight and win the point but it doesn't matter. it's good that we have this on core coaching you know so somebody can come and you can speak with the person, with your coach, with your dad or, I don't know, with your boyfriend, whatever, you know, who's coming on the court, you can just tell, tell them that how frustrating, you know, is, 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 is everything around you. <laughs> so we're really happy that we have this on court coaching. <laughs> just so that you can moan at someone. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you can just, yeah, like all women does, you know, like, we're just like... <laughs> And let's not forget that's the second time in three weeks she plays against Brengel because they, they crossed each other's path at Roland Garros. But she thinks that Brengel is a dangerous floater, especially in this surface. You know what I found it to play against Madison? You're rallying with her on any surfaces. You know, you have long rallies with lots of long points on any surfaces. So even we played in Paris with the heavy balls. It was raining, I think, almost raining or raining the whole day. So the clay was really slow and uh, we were having like really long games. Even if it was two sets, we played like almost two hours match. And same, same today, we were rallying. We were really playing some long points, some long games. It was a bit different conditions compared to all the week. It was uh, sunny today, humid and quite hot. So your body sometimes responds not really quick with this time of uh, changes. You need some time to adjust. <clears throat> and when you play such a long rallies, you know, I was feeling a little bit like that I have, I need some more time to breathe because we, with all this uh, running all over, forward, back, drop shots, lops, you know, it's not easy. So I'm really happy today that I won in two sets and uh, Madison is a really tough opponent on any surfaces. Yeah, on the, on the grass, I think she's more dangerous than on any other surfaces. One thing that cracked me up is like uh, hearing her being called Mrs. Vesnina, um, whereas in France, um, it was very much Mademoiselle, and her husband had a few things to say about that. <laughs> it's, I'm getting used to that more, and I actually like, like, like how it sounds, because in Paris, umpire, she, she asked me, Mariana, I think, or she asked me, uh, no, Eva, Eva Esteraki, she asked me, uh, do you want to call Mademoiselle or Madame? And I didn't find any difference. I was like, Mademoiselle sounds better. She's like, but you're married. You have to be Madame. I'm like, no, I like Mademoiselle more. Can I be Mademoiselle? And then my husband was there. He was like, it's interesting. They call you Mademoiselle in doubles, but in mix, you're Madame. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. So, honestly, I don't know. So here, every, every time I'm part of the coming, do you want to be called by Mrs.? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Now I'm good. <laughs> and then Petra Kvedova. Well, that... It's a strange defeat. I mean, like, of course, there's been um, some part of it is due to the injury. I don't think that she would have been bageled no. by Conte in the first set otherwise. But she didn't blame that one as much. No, I, mean, I don't think she's the kind of player that does blame uh, an injury. I think um, I think it's just a shame, though. Last year she came here, she had a cold, she wasn't well enough to, to compete, and then she got done over by Jankovic in the, what, third round, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. So, you know, she needs... To, yeah. 
I feel sorry for her because I think she needs a good run. I think she can be a danger in Wimbledon. I think I think actually maybe it suits her that she's dropped out of the top ten and that people are going to write her off a little bit and the focus is going to be very much on Serena, obviously, and on Muguruza as well. And she had a few things to say about that. Yeah, I don't know. I think I will find out tomorrow, but now I'm feeling pretty tired and sleepy. Um, <laughs> um, I think that my energy level is very low, <laughs> but uh, I hope that everything will be fine and I have a couple of days until the button starts, which is good on the other side. <laughs> yeah, I think the score looks terrible, um, for <laughs> sure. But I, I felt like like that she returned everything and uh, I think that I was serving pretty good. I had a good percentage of the first set, first serve and uh, she just returned everything. It was just difficult. I don't know what would happen actually. I didn't really feel that it's like 6-0 but it was. Uh, but uh, that's how it is. Sometimes it's, it's not looking great. <laughs> Even though she lost, she had a, two good matches. I mean, like she she reckons this was a good match for her, so maybe that wasn't too bad of a preparation after all. Well, I had uh, four matches, uh, especially here the two of them. I think I played very well. I think I'm feeling good, and um, the game plan and everything worked kind of well. I had a difficult match yesterday as well, and um, so I'm I'm okay with the preparation. Um, of course, we will see the next couple of days but I hope we'll be fine yeah I, I mean it's interesting with the new coach I wanted to know if she uh, if that changed her approach to the draw but no she still has no idea who she's playing until she actually walks onto the court um, we did actually ask her if she was looking forward to the party I think the answer is no <laughs> I will not <laughs> Are you going to the party? I do <laughs> not too happy um, well I I, I was a really you know, I'm trying to be in the competition here that I don't have to go there, but now I have to. <laughs> and then it was funny to see that she can make a joke, even though it was a bad day when she was asked about the Czech football. In the football? Oh boy, that's terrible. Um, yeah, I actually I was kind of following it because of my coaches, of course, but we didn't play well. So we're going home. That's me. <laughs> well, I'm going to Wimbledon, but anyway, <laughs> it's similar. Um, to finish the day, we, we finished, of course, with the uh, Great British Hope, uh, Jo Conter. She was well, she obviously beat Kvitova. Um, I think she's beginning to gradually warm into being the people's champion. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's getting there. But she's only just defending her points. Um, but she could actually go all the way. Well, I think that's it for tonight. I mean, like, sadly, we got more rain, <laughs> more rain, and they're kicking us out as usual because we are the late ones and we were the first in. So, all in all, solid day, wet day, uh, as usual. So, hopefully tomorrow there will be a bit more sun and good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.